Some of you don't know how powerful this word guardian is. A guardian is responsible, firstly, for the protection of those people he's in charge over. And protection is multidimensional. It's not the wild animals that are going to break through this house and come to attack you. But it's those other things that you're not able to understand or explain because you have not died life long enough. Or it's not simply given to you to know because it's not your place to know. And I have seen God sometimes not speak to us because it's just not for us to know certain things. Because he's our guardian. So when you are a guardian in a household, you're responsible to protect of the things that are seen, the things that are not seen, to educate, to under guard, you know, to direct, to instruct. All of that is the responsibility of a guardian. And so the price that comes with that, the maturity that comes with that, the wisdom that comes with juggling all of these things and putting parts together, it's not an easy responsibility like some of you think. That is why some of you now in your 40s and 50s are starting to ask, how did my father even manage to build a house? Take all the kids to school because your two kids are a problem. Your those two. The two kids you have in your house are a problem. But then you go back to the men who raised eight or 10 or 12 of them, plus your cousins and your, your neighbors, kids, and some of you, your parents extended, you know, their, their, their generous hands to people you are not related to, shared beds with them, food with them, and everything with them, and ask yourself, how would this guy run this whole household a whole week? Yet I'm struggling to plan for one child and a daughter. I mean, my, my son in the house with my, with my wife. That's the power of guardianship to understand what it means to be a guardian. And those, like I said, are multi-dimensional, but dimensional, there are levels to that. When you become a husband to a woman, a wife, you are her guardian. You will find that there sometimes as a man, decisions you will make to safeguard her, to safeguard the children. And sometimes your wife might understand, your children might understand. Sometimes they might not understand because the responsibility is with you as a man. I'm talking to people who know, to men who know that I'm in charge of the well-being of my household. You will realize the pressures we go through because you wake up one day and you're looking for these thousands of dollars, but your child might not know. Even your wife might not know. And this brain has to go around adding this and that and that and that to make sure that at the end of the day they survive. Whether the business worked or it did not work, the point is the kids need the milk. They need the pampers. They need everything working. The electricity must be on. The internet must work. You must, your brain has to find all these things to make things work. Reconcile all these things, sorry, to make things work. Now, as a guardian, you understand what I'm saying. Not everything you know and experience you'll share. There are things you might not be able to explain because in trying to explain them, you'll conflict with your faith. Are you following what I'm saying? So, but if you're a man and you're married to a builder, because you know some women are builders, some, are, some aren't, you know, it, 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 it comforts you because sometimes you're in a place uh, where you're confused. Proverbs 14, 1 comes in. The Bible says that, a wise woman buildeth, you know, a house, her house, buildeth, you know. If you have a builder, the builder comes and say, no, you know, uh, my husband, here you spent this much, but I think you shouldn't have spent this. I think we could have found a way of cancelling this and that to make sure that we save off some little money because next year we might need fees for the two kids. That's a builder. You can't be married to that kind of woman and be poor. You get it? But then you have women who are not builders at all. She will also be like the children. I don't care where you get the money. Brother, I want my wig money. I hope my spiritual daughters understand that I'm speaking in love. Because this you don't do for your husband, you do for your household. You do for your children. 
I know single mothers who have had to raise children in the absence of their fa the fathers, either the fathers left or some died. But if she was not a builder, her children would not go to school. And that's why I celebrate single mothers who have made it. Come on, let's celebrate them. They are paying fees. They are, you know, they are feeding the kids. They are guardians. The mind is there. Are you following what I'm saying? So it is with God. He's our guardian. There are things that in your estimate you need urgently. But your guardian says, this is not good for you now. And the wisdom to tell the difference. Because if I go back a bit on the parents, your child comes in the morning and says, I want sweets. And then you go buy 20 cans of sweets. Put them in the house. Every time you want baby, come and eat candy. Come and eat. The kid wants candy in the morning, wants chocolate during day, wants a chocolate fudge in the evening, wants a black forest at night. This kid is eating sugar every day. How can you feed a kid sugar in the morning? Sugar at 10 a.m., sugar at midday, sugar at 2 p.m., sugar at, six, at, at six, 4 p.m., sugar in the evening. You know, you, you, you're killing your child. Right? You know, as a parent, one day, a child comes and says, Mommy, I want cake, and you tell him you're not going to have cake. In your estimate, you feel this kid has had more sugar than they should have. Because that's what a parent does. But are you going to tell me you're going to choose to say, I know, if my kid wants a cake, they get a cake whenever they want a cake. That's why some of you people are spoiled because your parents fed your cravings. Every time you wanted something, it was available. Now, you don't know how to live in a world where certain things are not available. You'd conflict with your convictions and your, the godly character that you must carry because you no longer have breaks, emotional breaks, to say here, I can say no to ice cream. Here, I can say no, I think I've eaten more than I need. Why? Because when you were younger, you were never taught how to put some breaks around you, some self-control on you to know that I don't need to eat every time. I don't need to drink this every day. Some of you know the, the families in which we're raised. If you ate break breakfast, that was breakfast. You can't munch in the middle. Mm -mm. Lunch time was lunch time. Eat all you want. You can't munch in the middle. Wait for evening tea if you want and some little dinner. That's it. Are you following what I'm saying? Maybe this parent was raised in poverty and they promised themselves that when I grow up, my whatever my child wants to eat, they eat. No, 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 no. God will judge you for that because it was your responsibility to raise that child in the way that they should work. Yeah. When a child grows to understand that not everything you want, you shall have every time you want to have it because the judgment of life and the way of natural justice does not provide for that. You're raising the right citizen. You're raising the right individual. Yes. And it might involve some discipline. I was telling you in the first service, my mother was a very good woman. She never used to beat us. No. She just used to lay hands on us and cast out devils. Cleanse lepers. By the time I was 12 years old, when we were 12, 13, he would, should not, she never used to touch us anymore. By the time I touch, if you teach a child obedience the first seven years of their lives, you will tell when they're 12. Because I remember every time we went into 13, my mother never touched us again. But up till today, I still kneel before her. I can't answer my mother back. That woman put something in this head. I fear her. If she calls me, I feel like a, a, lioness, a lioness is roaring somewhere. Grace! She's like, Grace! But I hear, why? <laughs> I think and I believe that it was that discipline that has allowed me to be able to minister to you. You get my point? Guardian. 
I've used all these examples to show you that God, this God we serve, is your guardian as well. And there are things he will let in your life, not because he hates you or he doesn't love you. Known are his ways from the beginning. He knows what he's doing. Trust him. He knows what he's doing. He knows how everything that's disturbing you can bring glory one day. He knows. He's God. He is God. He's God. 